ideas. Actually, we have an idea box because we can't <laughs> deal with all of our ideas, so we put them in a box. <laughs> but we're what we're really excited about this space is it's really designed to be a community home. So we're launching a program. We, I guess I'm letting the cat out of the bag tonight, but we're launching a program called PlaySpace. And PlaySpace will be uh, grants, space grants for artists. So you'll apply and you can get a space grant of 10 hours or 20 hours or 50 hours. And in New York, space is one of the most premium commodities um, for writers. So um, we're gonna be able to provide that space to people. So that's one thing. And the other thing is we're launching a portfolio of four fellowships, um, life-sustaining fellowships that are gonna provide huge financial stipends. Some provide housing, some provide production incentive funds. So fellowships is another big thing that's gonna be happening. Great, and because we are today celebrating the opening of this wonderful new space, uh, the Lark's new, uh, in a way, home, uh, what uh, did you excite you about this new space? Because I think you're the one who found it or somehow, uh, in a way, got to uh, get the Lark in this new space, you know? Um, we were, Lark had been looking for a space for about six years before I got here, and then we spent about three years looking for a space and we um, happened upon this space. We saw it four years ago and it was double the price. And then luckily, because of the economy, we were able to afford it at the time that we moved in. But what we really loved about it is it's in a building with a bunch of theater companies. It's, in, it's close to transportation. It has light, natural light in every room. And artists in New York work in really dark spaces all the time. And the idea that we can provide nature or at least natural light in the rehearsal rooms was really key to us. So we saw it, we fell in love with it, and uh, we quickly you know, made a deal and made it happen. So. Tell us, uh, who are the guests tonight, you know? I see many LARC artists, supporters, donors. Do you want to give any shout out to anybody? Who are these people, these wonderful people? Of course, I know half of them, but maybe you can say a few things about our guests today to the online viewers, globally, people watching us from all over the world, hopefully. <laughs> Well, there are all kinds of people. Um, it takes a village, right, as they say. And so in the room tonight, we have um, core artists, fellows, directors, actors. We have board members. Um, some of them are really well-known playwrights like David Henry Wong and Arthur Copet and Teresa Reback. Um, we have amazing funders. We have people from the New York Community Trust, um, from the Greenwall Foundation, from the Schubert Foundation, the Mellon Foundation. Um, so it really is a celebration of all the components of the community of LARC. So from funders to board members to staff to volunteers to interns. Um, so it's really it's a it's a really nice cross section of the entire community. So this is great and I'm gonna let you go soon to be with all our guests. I know that you are really busy today as all the other LARC staff. And I'm, I'm really happy that we got to talk with you. And uh, uh, in a way it's so good to have you here so Stay with us a little more, one minute, because I feel that the, our online viewers need to know you a little better, you know. I feel that uh, you as a managing director have done so much for the LARC and have participated uh, to this new growth of the LARC. I, I mean, we all know that the LARC has grown immensely in the last year since you are the managing director. Can you tell us your secret? What have you done to the LARC to grow so much? Hmm, I don't know if I have a secret. Um, that's a really good, the question is more interesting, I think, than the answer. Um, I, I guess for me, I'm on the management side, not the artistic side, because I believe in really good art and visionary artists, and I love building community. So I think the secret is maximizing the strengths of the organization. So John Eisner is one of the most visionary human beings I have ever met in my entire life, and I think everyone who's involved in the LARC wouldn't be involved if it wasn't for his vision. So. I think building on John's vision and then the quality of artists um, involved with the LARC, are, it's amazing. It's really stunning. Everything we do is in process, which means it's not finished, but everything we do is really high quality, and so I'm very proud to support that. So I think for me, it's finding a way to make the process of theater, because we're not a producing organization, really sexy. And it's hard because process isn't necessarily sexy, right? So you want to you wanna see the finished product with all the bells and whistles and the sets and costumes, but we don't do that. What we're really doing is investing in someone's vision at an early stage. And I think that's great. I mean, I think artists are really visionary. And so I guess my secret is I look to what the strength of the art is and I try to position the organization around those strengths. Okay, you guys, you just heard Mark Michael Robertson's secret for growth of the playwriting organization, LARC Play Development Center. I remind you again to follow us on Twitter and check on us on Facebook and on the LARC's website. And thank you, Michael. Thank you so much. We're going to go to our next 
LARC staff member, actually the director of on-site projects and programs, Lloyd Sue, a wonderful playwright. I have seen a few of his plays and he is amazing. I'm sure some of you already know Lloyd's work. But uh, today we have him here wearing the hat of uh, Lark's director of uh, on-site projects. So I'm going to ask him the usual Lark questions. Our online viewers learn more about the Lark and about the people working for the Lark. Uh, Lloyd, so how did you get involved with the Lark? How did you come to work for the Lark? Uh, well, I first got involved with the Lark uh, 2005. Uh, I was invited to join the Playwrights Workshop as a writer, and that was, uh, you know, just kind of an amazing experience and really life-changing experience to be able to uh, engage with that community of writers. Um, I get to meet, you know, like incredible people, incredible writers like you, um, and uh, was able to work uh, with the Lark in a variety of different programs between then and. Uh, the very beginning of 2011, I joined the staff um, and have been, uh, yeah, the director of on-site programs here since January 2011. Yes, as you can see, we playwrights who have developed plays with the Lark are all wearing different hats. John Eisner asked me to host the live streaming today and I'm happy to do that. I'm kind of, I dug out my old uh, TV host hat in order to do this, but this is really exciting to be able to communicate with so many people out there who knows where you are all around America, and America, in Africa, in Asia, so please stay with us because I will be asking Lloyd Sue now about his work. I think that you developed your play American Huang here and it was a bare bones section Tell us a little about these programs at the LARC, the Roundtable, the Studio Retreats, the Bearbones. Uh, what are the differences between these programs and how do they help uh, the playwrights and the artists? Sure. Uh, the, there's a lot of different programs and all the programs are really designed to be able to support any, uh, like a writer at any stage in their career from, you know, very established people with awards you've heard of. Uh, to people who are, you know, sometimes writing their very first play. Um, and also designed to support writers at any stage in their process. Uh, so sometimes uh, programs are designed to support the generation of material, you know, even just uh, when nothing is written, like no, like... <laughs> programs that are designed to support work that, uh, uh, you know, might be a little further along in the process, might be even production ready, uh, and the Bare Bones program is one of those programs that's really designed to replicate the kind of environment of a production rehearsal atmosphere. Um, so it's, you know, like minimal uh, sets, minimal costumes. Sometimes actors come out, uh, you know, with book in hand. Um, but then s some scenes they'll have it memorized and they'll be very elaborate uh, staging, if not elaborate design. Um, and then uh, from there to like the generative programs where it's starting from nothing and beginning it, uh, in between there's a lot of different things that are designed uh, to you know, hear and rehear a play uh, in, a pr in a process where the writer is really at the center of um, how those tools are useful and what's most useful at any given moment. And the last question for Lloyd, what does excite you about this new space, this amazing space where we feel that Lark now has really found its home? Well, the thing, uh, you know, as a staff member that I'm most excited about is just the fact that by having uh, more resources uh, as an organization that's devoted to providing resources to writers and to artists, it just means we have that many more resources to give. And that as a staff, we have the ability to uh, you know, we just have more space, we have more uh, uh, opportunity to uh, help writers do what they do best. Thank you so much, Lloyd. I'm really happy that we got a little chance to chat with you, and I'm going to let you go to hang out with our guests. Thank you so much. Any last uh, comments, uh, uh, questions, answers for our viewers? Well, just thank you, and you're really good at this. It's very impressive. <laughs> Let's talk after an hour or so. <laughs> Thanks. Awesome talking to you. Sam. Thank you. So let's see who else we have here. As I told you, we'll be having these live chats with some of the amazing Lark playwrights and supporters and board members. And here we have the wonderful Chisa Hutchinson. 
I'm telling you guys, she's an amazing playwright. I cannot tell you how much I like her work. Chisa, I'm a big fan of yours. And you also have one of the three minutes plays here today. So first of all, can you tell us a little about, uh, you know, the moment that your relationship with the Lark started? How did you get involved with the Lark? Uh, that's actually a funny story. Um, I was in California at the time and um, I was teaching high school English and uh, I had sent a play into Playwrights Week and totally forgotten about it and got a phone call from Andrea and um, totally misunderstood because I didn't know what the Lark was all about. I didn't know about the mission. I didn't know that it was this like crazy vortex of creativity where people get sucked in, you know? Um, so she calls. And she's like, hey, we really like your play. We would like to do a reading of it out here. Um, and I was like, all right, great. Good luck with that. Have fun, you know? And she's like, oh, I don't think you understand. We, we want to fly you out here. We want you here for the whole week. You have to be here for rehearsals. You need to meet with the actors. You need to see the other plays. You need to, and I was like, oh, okay. That sounds really involved, but all right, I'll do that. So I came out and it was like a whirlwind of, of activity and, and intelligence and, and creative stuff you know and it was just it was a lot of fun um and I would literally find myself bouncing on the way from like the Y where I was doing to to the Lark um because I was just so happy and so stimulated and um and then I decided I, sh I needed to come back out east because of my experience here so we are both uh, graduates actually of uh, the New York University's uh, graduate program in dramatic writing. And I know that that was a great home for us to develop some work. So is Lark your, your new home for developing plays now? Uh, Lark is my first home for, for developing plays. I didn't even uh, make the decision to apply to graduate school until after my experience with the Lark. Um, they hooked me up with Tina Howe and she was my mentor. and. Um, you know, I wound up actually spending the night at her house after kind of a wild night we had. <laughs> um, and over breakfast, she and Norma making me breakfast the next day, and they said, um, oh, well, you know, you just, you have to move move back out east. You just have to move back out east, and you should go to graduates. Oh, you should go to uh, Columbia. No, 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 you should go to NYU. <laughs> so she was the one who really kind of got the ball rolling, and she's like, I'll write you a recommendation and everything, and she sure did. She really did. She was as good as her word. Um, wrote me a recommendation. I put the application together in a day. <laughs> um, so yeah, really, the Lark was was the start for everything. Oh my God, I didn't know that about you. That Lark was first, and NYU after that. For me, it was the other way around. They found me at NYU, and uh, John Eisner saw a play of mine, Waxing West, that was being read uh, at NYU in the Goldberg Theater. So I'm really excited that you are here today. Tell us maybe a little about the play that you will be presenting today. I got to see a little, and I was very, very excited. Uh, it's a weird little piece. Um, I try to take full advantage of, of the medium of theater um, in the three minutes that we have. Um, and it's... Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to describe. You kind of have to be there. You should watch it. <laughs> yes, that's going to be a great thing to watch Chisa's plays. It's a great surprise. has many interesting visual elements and the concept at the core of it. So you can see that here at the Lark, you can develop any kind of plays, you know. Any sort of plays uh, are allowed and are encouraged to be developed uh, as long as the playwright wants to try something and to take risks. And maybe last question, uh, Chisa, and then I'll let you go to work with your actors, is uh, what does excite you about this new space? Uh, why is it better? Oh my gosh! It's so great that the Lark finally has a space that aligns with its vision, um, which is not, you know, this is not a production palace, you know, it's not, it really is kind of an incubator, um, and it's so, it's now I feel the space is as welcoming and as nurturing and um, um, flexible and accommodating as, as the people, as the Larkies are. So um, that's probably the most exciting thing and I'm really, really, really happy to be here. Thank you so much, Chisa, and I let you go to work with your actors. And I see you later to drink something together at the party. <laughs> so let's see who we have here now. People are drinking, are having fun, other people are preparing their plays. And here we have Penny Jackson. She's a playwright and a Lark supporter. Uh, she's one of uh, the Lark donors as well, not just a playwright. So she's wearing many hats, as I told you, m most of us do. So it's great to have you here, looking so beautiful. Look at this lady. Mm -hmm. so 
thrilled to be here. I am thrilled to support the Lark. It is a fantastic organization. The playwrights that they help develop are remarkable, including Saviana here, who is one of absolutely my favorite female playwright, as well as, I mean, Rajiv, Katori, I can go on and on. Can you tell us how did you get involved with the Lark? Because I know you have a special story. You've known John Eisner for a long time. Yes, um, I met John Eisner in 1982. Um, his wife's sister was my husband's roommate, if you can follow that. And the first time I met John, he was bartender. <laughs> he was a bartender. And it's remarkable to think that here we are in 2012, and he is the head of this remarkable organization in this beautiful space, hosting fantastic programs, um, international as well as national. What I love about the Lark <laughs> start taking you to your first group of performances so please find your team captain now blue is in the middle yellow is over here and green is right at the door and please follow your team captains to the first performances it is beautiful there is light and um, I am in Saviana's playwriting class at primary stages and the lark was kind enough to allow us to use one of their offices and it was i felt the inspiration seeping through the walls all the art artists here and i've never i felt so inspired yes and i just attended your reading yesterday of the play that you are developing so again many hats for penny any last thing that you want to tell to the viewers online and globally about you and about the last sure i think you know people go to a broadway play and they forget that there's a lot of groundwork behind that play. It can take a playwright years and years to develop it. And I think people need to realize that a lot of playwrights are very lonely, they're poor, they're frustrated, and the Lark helps them believe in their mission and their goal. Thank you so much, Penny. I'll let you go and have fun now. <laughs> Go to the party, yes, have a drink for me. So thank you guys, and now we have a really special guest here. Uh, yes, Colin Greer. Mwah. Thank you so much for joining us. Colin is actually the head of the board of the Lark, a main, of course, supporter and an amazing playwright thinker and the head of an organization that supports actually artists worldwide and uh, I it's amazing to have you here tell us a little about how did you get involved with the lark <laughs> tell us the secret John I met John 15 years ago um, and I have to say I fell in love um, he had a vision and a commitment to making it happen that was built on artists being the most important people in the action and I was used to um, organizations where the people who do the work don't get the respect. And this began with artists getting the greatest respect. And you have been involved with the Lark in you know, so many other capacities, wearing many hats as a playwright as well. Can you tell us a little a few about a few programs that excite you here at the Lark? Yeah, for me, the, the thing that's been most inspiring is the diaspora work. Work globally and here with communities of people that are from other countries. Um, the Lark has been breakthrough around that. Um, working in Mexico, working in translation, working in Romania, working in Russia, working in China. There was even a period where there was some work in New Zealand, um, in Africa. It's, I think, the only company that really has an authentic outreach to the world built on artists speaking out for them with voices that aren't heard in any other way. And what do you think is great about this new space? We are all excited about this new space. Well, I think the physicality of the reality is always powerful. The people can see what you, what you mean when it's embodied. I mean, an idea without embodiment is abstraction. And so the lark is a hard thing to convey. There aren't productions. There are no great stars associated with it. So having a physical space that has dignity and power um, is enormously valuable. What do you envision for the Lark for the next five years? Is this growth going to continue? And where is the Lark going to be in five years? What do you think? I think the Lark is going to be the parent of plays all over the world that will make plays in community as important as plays on Broadway. 
this is amazing. And maybe now can you tell us a little secret about your own work and what are you about to do for the next month or so? What are your plans, your projects? Um, my own personal projects? Uh, whatever you want to tell us and the online viewers. Uh, uh, too quick, I have a play about Sarah Palin <laughs> that um, is kind of fun and we're hoping to move that along. And I've been asked to write a play about the atomic bomb and it's going to be about Bertram Russell's relationship with the pilot that dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. Oh my God, Colin is so amazing and his topics are always so thought provoking. And I'm really excited to see what you come up with in terms of the new place and the work with the Lark. Thank you so much, Colin. Yeah, thank you. So we let Colin go now because other events are happening and people are going now, are going to see the place, are going to the other speeches. Uh, we can see how in these different rooms where the Lark uh, uh, grand opening event uh, is happening, people are starting to follow the guides. There are different guides, the green one, the yellow one, and they take groups of people and they take them to these uh, other spaces where the place happened, this three minutes place. Nine playwrights that have worked with the Lark for a long time uh, have written this uh, three minutes place and then they will present them with the actors. And you are here and you will see different events that happen here in the space and you will be able to witness with us what's going on with the Lark Grand Opening. Follow us on Twitter at the hashtag Lark Go. Go on Facebook, click the button. It's this virtual arts ovation TV that is live streaming this event and we are really happy to have you with us. I hope that by now you tell your friends to click the buttons, go on Facebook, go to the Lark and be with us at this event, you know. You can be wherever, in Chicago, in Atlanta, Arizona friends, I hope you are watching us. And of course people in Europe, in Mexico, be with us today. This online Live streaming is amazing, you know. I used to work um, in TV back in Romania 12 years ago, ooh, old times. But now I feel that with these online possibilities, we can really do so much. We can be here together. I can talk to you wherever you are, and we can share an event like this, the Lark's Grand Opening. Uh, I was really excited to be asked to host this big live stream event. It's because I worked so much with the Lark. Lark is my home, you know. Um, I've been here in the US for 11 years now, and when I met John Eisner and I got here at the Lark, I felt the sense of home. And I started to develop my place in English and to be uh, together. Now we'll be taking you to our Twitter messages. Joy will uh, read a few of your comments. We're just so excited that um, we have so many followers on Twitter tonight, and we s I see uh, Rihanna Namazir Mirza. Sorry about the name. She's but an amazing playwright, Rihanna Mirza. There you go. She works with the Lark. <laughs> Yay, Rihanna. Do you want to read what she's saying? So cool. I'm eavesdropping on Lark opening prep via live stream. Rihanna, we love you. Rihanna developed her place at the Lark. She has been a fellow here, and she is an amazing playwright. I'm happy that you watch us, Rihanna. I love you. Let's check out some of the other comments. Okay, Syracuse, giddy with anticipation. Okay, what My do you anticipate? It's a great me. event. Stay with us. You're going to have fun, I bet. Uh, then, waiting for the opening. It's happening. <laughs> yeah, we're it's almost starting. there. So get ready. We're going to see some fabulous plays by a lot of people. And uh, I think we're almost there. Stay 